Yeah. What? What? <laughs> Alrighty. What's going on everyone? Uh, welcome to another edition of Smart Guys. Today is technically it's Friday, March 15th, 2015. Yeah, well, yeah. I may not actually be uploading this video today. I may wait a day or two because I've got so much footage that's been going out. I just uploaded a vlog last night. I don't want it to, you know, this, this or that to get overshadowed. So, uh, but uh, with me, as always, is John Rambo. That's right, yes. And uh, we are once again heading straight into the road to WrestleMania. The buildup has begun. We've got less than a month now, actually, wow. John, before we're actually going to be there for WrestleMania 29. I'm starting to get really excited. Well, I'm actually a bit excited. It seems like the more I watch your WWE program, I get less excited. <laughs> so if you just like, don't just, watch any wrestling for the next three weeks, we'll be good. I started trying to talk me out of being so into it. But, uh, <laughs> I'm very, uh, very excited. So we've got some developments of this week on Raw. You know, more plot lines developing for WrestleMania. Also, big week for TNA. We're going to talk a lot about that. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I saw. Um, I saw like three match. I saw the, the final three matches of Lockdown and in, in, uh, Impact. So we'll talk about that. Yes. So let's jump right into it, into Raw. Um, Raw opens, and they actually have a tribute to Paul Bearer, who we talked about last week, uh, unfortunately passed away. And uh, they have this cool, real good, i say it was really a great tribute that they did, a good like two, two minutes of footage of Paul Bearer over the years, all the things he's been involved in. And uh, The Undertaker comes out mm -hmm. to start the show, and he's, he's basically doing his knee in the ring looking at the urn, you know, the urn that Paul Bear has carried for so many years. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't break the uh, the key fab on it. Uh, it's like, because he's part of the storylines, you know. It's right. Kane's father and uh, his sister, Thunder so they kind of just, he was kind of like the character as well as the, the guy. Right. At the same time, he was getting sent off, so. So yeah. good, he's doing the pose like a, you know, giving respect Gen to Gen Paul Bear. Genuflecting, is you call that? I guess, yeah, genuflect. Yeah. And as he's doing it, uh, CM Punk interrupts. I have to say, of, of the music, I, I'm really glad that he picked that theme, because just hearing the static just interrupt that scene was so good. It was like, <laughs> like oh, shit, that was like a great interruption. So he comes out, cuts a promo, basically completely disrespecting Paul Bearer, saying it's all about WrestleMania, he's going to end the streak, blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, he said it's not about Paul Bearer. When Paul Bearer gets, in Paul Bearer's mind, you will always be undefeated. But everyone else's mind, you will right. You will see you lose. Yeah. You'll never see you lose or something. Right, right. So as he's cutting this promo, Kane actually comes out, and so this is leading That's into boy. you know that Kane is pissed at SCM Punk for disrespecting Paul Bearer during the yeah, tribute. Yeah, Kane disrespected him a thousand times. Kane killed him. But on that was, the last line he killed him. But that didn't really happen. So, uh, so yeah, so Kane, it's announced that this the main event of tonight is going to be Kane versus CM Punk in a no DQ match. So that's the build-up for the, the, the main event of the night. Mm -hmm. um, Big Show is in a match with The Shield. And it was uh, Seth Rollins. And they were saying this was like the first time The Shield members had a match. Right. A singles a, match. A real match, right. But well, The Shield just comes out anyway. They just come <laughs> out, right, exactly. And they interrupt and they beat the shit out of The Big Show. And don't, don't they triple power bomb him, I think? Uh, yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, he looked like he was kind of frightened. I would I mean, be too. If I were that fucking big. Well, the last time he was power bomb, Kevin Nash did it to him. And he dropped the right on his head. Fuck. So uh, he, he doesn't like to be power bombed. He doesn't like that. <laughs> I don't blame him. Yeah. So basically, Big Show gets destroyed by the Shield. Which uh, further sits up their match at WrestleMania. Right. Uh, Dolph Ziggler defeats Daniel Bryan. What did you think about this match? Uh, yeah, that's good. I mean, I don't know. They 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 act like this is the problem. They want to act like he did something so great. He beat Daniel Bryan. Even even when you read this, and I reread some of this recap. Right. We all oh, what a tremendous victory. And it's like. Daniel Bryan is like, you know, <laughs> he's their version of Eric Young. Like he's, right, right. He's a take, he, an he, oddball tag champ. He mostly loses and is in lower card stops. So it's they want to act like it's such a big victory and everything. Right, right. But the rumor I'm hearing is that they they possibly might team Big E with Ziggler against um, Team Hell No at WrestleMania. which it's is awful. This doesn't really make any <laughs> awful sense. Awful idea. It's this doesn't really make idea. any sense. They want to get all these guys on the show. I can see them doing right. it. Right, that's the thing. They want to Why would Ziggler want this one to do this? I don't know. Well, it was a good match, you know. It was. A, I, I did. I thought it was a good match for Raw. Yeah, I definitely yeah. did. Uh, Fandango doesn't wrestle again. I'm not even going to go into. Fandango comes out. Same thing that we said. Talk about last week. Doesn't wrestle again. He'll probably do this till WrestleMania. He doesn't seem so. very good at, at the doing the thing. I don't know. Right. The accent's completely ridiculous. I don't know. It's just it's very stupid. You don't know what the gimmick is besides he's a dancer and he's like. He has some sort of little accent maybe, but it doesn't sometimes. They should have, you know what they should do? They should have Rico return? Come on, beat the <laughs> shit out of him. should just have like, Rico in the, the same place. character. I destroy you now. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So yeah. whatever, Fandango. Uh, Brock Lesnar 
uh, attacks the New Age Outlaws during their tag match. They were having a tag match against Team Road Scott. Well, the New Age Outlaws were, we were like, why are they going to be on? Are they going to do? A, are they going to be back or right. something? Or what's going on? And then we found out why they're back. That's so why. Brock Lesnar could destroy huh. Triple H's friends. Right. And then Brock Lesnar announces he does accept Triple H's challenge. However, only if Triple H will allow him to name a stipulation. Yeah. And he will not take, say what those we'll stipulations what are until he approves the match or signs the contract. And supposedly, what I, what I read was like only a few people actually know. It's like Vince, like yeah. Lesnar, Triple H. They like the only a few people know. There's a lot of rumors. Will it be an MMA style match? Jeez, like a worked MMA match. A worked MMA match. Which I think. What did they do? Jeff Jarrett did that when he was doing his MMA thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's right. right. That's right. He did with Kurt Angle. So we've kind of seen some of that before. It'd be kind of strange though. I mean, pretty, pretty weird. Yeah. So. Especially if Triple H beats him, like, can he beat him in an MMA? In an MMA? How does Triple H just, he doesn't know MMA. He does the pedigree. Yeah, he's going to do pedigree in the middle of a, of a MMA match. Yes, he's knocked out. He <laughs> win. I will see what they do. Maybe they'll just be holding the cell and, uh, you know, the whole... It has to be something different, though, if they're playing it like this. Right. If it's just telling the cell, you're like, all right, well, why was this such a big secret, you know? Right, right, right. We'll see. Um, Mark Henry has a singles match with Kofi Kingston. He beats him. Then right back to the singles match with Heath Slater. He beats him. Yeah. And then Mark Henry comes out to kind of, I guess, continue on their this new rivalry that they're building up between the two. And so it becomes a one-upsmanship match where Ryback does the shell shock to Drew McIntyre. So then Mark Henry does the World Strongest Slam to Drew McIntyre. Who can destroy these jobbers. Right. And they, so they're just doing it back and forth, finisher, 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 to, this, to poor Drew McIntyre. And so uh, it's being reported that Mark Henry has no contract after WrestleMania. Ah. So this could be like his final thing. His going out match. It could yeah. be a swan song. His squash in the league. <laughs> yeah, his, squ his right back squash match. So yeah, I don't know if that's uh, accurate or not, but that's what's out there right now. Okay. Uh, Alberto Del Rio goes up against Antonio Cesaro. It's a good match. I actually enjoyed the match a lot. But, again, you get the world champion going over the U.S. champion. Should that happen? Yes. But why do you have these two wrestling to begin with when both of them should be getting built up? It just makes Cesaro look bad again, in my opinion. But I did like the match. I did enjoy yeah. it. It was and a good technical the, match. The, the parody you were talking about from SmackDown last week, they did... Oh, the Zeb Coulter? That was real... I told you it was terrible. I told you it was awful. Because, like, the Zeb, Coulter, the Zeb Coulter stuff is a parody of the Tea Party in the first place. Right. So that's like a parody of a parody. <laughs> that's really bad. I don't know. All right. Um, so Vicky tells the Team Road Scholars that since their tag match with the New Age Outlaws got broken up earlier tonight by Brock Lesnar, they're now going to have a tag match against Randy Orton and Sheamus. Oh, wow. Do I even need... To like talk about the match, like, do you know what the match was? I mean, you know exactly what happens whenever these two guys, you know, some RKO's and some uh, bro kicks, bro and kicks, and another. Bro oh my kick. god! The only the only notable thing to even talk about here is that the Bellas twins have been yeah, re-signed yeah, yeah, by yeah, WWE, yeah. and I think they may have gotten a boob job. Because yeah, they, yeah, like their yeah, boobs yeah. look bigger, right? Yeah, they, they did. Yeah, they got a boob yeah, job. Yeah. So that's what it was. Yeah. So they left the company, got a boob job, well, and said, yeah. "Hey, look, we got bigger tits," and they re-signed them. I guess they, were, you know, rested up. They made some, you know, some appearances here and there. They got a boob job, and uh, now they got bad. They're probably paying them more now because the Divas division. That shit pisses me off. They actually did a shoot thing where they were talking and they were like, "Oh yeah." They were like, "Did they say the Divas division is in shambles without us?" Yeah, that's that? what they said. It's they pretty, said the Divas division is shambles without us. So you know, it's we're pretty bad. true. There's like two people. But what pisses me off is the Bellas were like the only women in the WWE in the Divas division who didn't have like shit done to them. And they were naturally beautiful, and so even though they didn't have giant fake tits, they could at least come out and went, okay, well, the Divas Division at least has some real women, yeah. and it's representative of real women. Now, no, now there's literally none. Zero. Name one real woman that's in the Divas Division. Maybe Tamina, I guess? Well, yeah, but she's not even really on. So. Right. So, it's like, what the fuck, man? Well, the, the TNA, the, the Knockouts matches, I actually look forward to seeing them sometimes. I, I want to see them, and they do good stuff. And, they can uh, actually wrestle. Ring of Honor's been doing some women's matches here and there lately, so hmm. if you if you like that, you know they're not physically beautiful, <laughs> right? But they do a lot of stuff, so there's some good stuff out there, I guess. Um, there was a, 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 a supposed episode of the highlight reel. Yeah, which they which probably was, decided to do like ten minutes before because they right. had the set. Or they didn't <laughs> have the set. That was so funny. Like, oh, Jared sure. even joked about yeah. it. He was like, oh, oh, you look at that. I made the Jaretron disappear. This scene was <laughs> bad. I think Michael Cole was saying that the scene was horrible while it was happening. Yeah. And, the Weed Bear comes out or something. Maybe. Yeah, so it's the highlight reel with Chris Jericho. He's interviewing um, The Miz, 
about his movie, you know, The Marine 3. And the way Barry goes, all oh, my movies the, was like the fifth most popular. Well, this was a weird segment, <laughs> okay? The Miz says that his movie has shattered the sales expectations. It's not even in the theaters. <laughs> well, the, okay, so it came out on Blu-ray or whatever last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. And he's saying that Sony Pictures had some, like, sales expectation, and apparently it, like, blew it out of the water. Well, they sold five instead of two. That's what I mean. Like, what was the sales expectation for this movie? That's what I want to know. I want to, did anyone see this? Anyone out there? Cool stuff if you, if you saw yeah, it. Yeah, if you saw the movie, comment on, on the video and let us know if it was any good. It's not even on, it's on demand or anything? I didn't see it anymore. No, it's just, no, WWE films are never on demand. It's That's just actually only important to mention. It's only on Blu-ray. It's like only at Walmart on like certain days. A certain, <laughs> a certain, certain days, a they certain certain not take it back. A certain times, a certain <laughs> days, only at Walmart. Sorry, sir, you missed it by five minutes, you have to come back tomorrow. <laughs> No one saw this. Well, I don't know, so how did it break the sales record? This is what I mean, like I don't understand what was the sales expectation. They made it up. So then Wade Barrett comes yeah. out and he says his movie was in the top five. That's not good. Week. Like top five, like it didn't make top three, it didn't make top two. Can you know? even name five movies that are out? I, I can name maybe the, what two. Right. The Oz movie and uh, yeah. maybe one other. Oz and the Identity Thief. Okay, yeah, there you and, go. And uh, you know, and that's the, a movie, Identity Thief, a movie that's been out for like a month beat yeah, yeah. this movie that's yeah. a new movie. I so, couldn't even name five, so yeah. You know, why are you bragging about it? Know, right. So anyway, they're all going around about movies and shit, and it turns yeah. out that there's going to be a match, Jericho against The Miz, and the winner of that match is going to be the number one contender for the Intercontinental title. Yeah. So they have this match, and during the match, Wade Barrett interferes, which ends up to be a no contest. So now, I guess the rumor, like you had said earlier, is that there might be a triple threat. Triple threat, Intercontinental title match, which, which I don't like that match, though. I mean, why, why does Jericho want the Intercontinental title for like the, what, ninth time or right. something? Right, who and, cares? Uh, I, I don't know. I could, I could pass on that match. Um, yeah. I mean, a better purpose or uh, use for him. I think they just want them at WrestleMania. They don't know it seems like he in. just shows up and he's like, what do you want me to do? All right, I'll do he it. He punches his time card. He goes he to does, the ring. He, he does, does whatever it is. He does it. Whatever he's told to do and he punches out. See you later. I'm going on tour with, you know, Fozzie for a few Yeah, months. but I think you know, they could... They could Promote him as a legend too, just like they do with Triple H and these other guys. That, that, that's yeah, one, one of the they guest won't. guys. They won't. He's a guest star too, essentially. He is. When he comes in, he's just part of the pack. <laughs> the other guys come in, they're like, "Oh, here they right. are. Here's a high-profile, yeah. crazy ma- main event match." You know. Yeah. Um. Okay. Jack Swagger has a singles match against Sin Cara. He beats him. I think the uh, I think the subculture stuff starting a little tired already. It was tired when it started. <laughs> I was bored of it all. I think the, the first, first couple of weeks it was really good, but now it's just started like, all right. He doesn't know. like Mexicans, so Isn't now Jack Swagger must wrestle every Mexican possible. Uh, he'll, what probably, do you mean? he'll probably wrestle Yoshitatsu next week. You know, every foreigner he's going to wrestle. That actually, that actually would have been a better idea than what they've done. Like, well, last week we put <laughs> up, what, Hacksaw and... Right, all the legends last yeah. week. So. so, I don't know, the angle's kind of stale. We'll see what it's happens. Getting, it's getting there, yeah. Going into WrestleMania. And then the main event... Kane versus CM Punk in a no DQ match. There's chairs involved. There's all kinds of stuff involved. And I would like—I think you should comment on the ending of the match because you had. A oh, it's just good such a—it's such a like <laughs> a nostalgia flashback to like the early '90s. Like, like when Undertaker first came out, he was like a like a top <clears throat> guy. He rose up, he became champion, and beat Hogan, blah blah. Right. blah. Then he turned face, <clears throat> and he was almost like in his separate promotion from everyone else. If you remember, like. He would get involved with these like other monsters and this right. other stuff, and he wouldn't ever fight for belts. He wouldn't ever be associated with like top like the other guys. He would be like his own world. Side feuds. And always. the urn was almost like a belt. And guys would try to steal it and take it from him. And uh, often, often times, what would happen is you'd get these feuds and like things would happen, like which happened in this match. The dong would play. The guys would get all flustered. Right. Oh, where would, is he? Where is he? This is like what happens here. <clears throat> the dong goes off, and see a punk is distracted. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> And then he gets pinned by Kane. Right, choke slam and pin. Yeah, and then uh, what, what happened, what used to happen back then all the time, uh, Mr. Hughes stole it, Comet's the Supreme Fighting Machine, he stole the urn and melted it into a chain, which <laughs> is a bar, and uh, Titty Biasi was trying to get it, and uh, Seal Puck stole the urn, yep. hits Kane with it, and then Undertaker comes and he runs away. And he runs away with the urn. So I, I don't know, I feel like they're kind of going through the motions a little bit with this whole program, like... Uh, it came out of nowhere. Usually, Undertaker comes back a lot sooner than this, mm-hmm. and he has more of a, a purpose and a reason why. He right, there's a program, you know, going on. Like remember, he comes back last year because he wants to wrestle Triple H because Triple H has been saying that. Yeah, yeah, because he destroyed, he destroyed him. him the year before. The year before. Before that, he didn't want Triple to do H it. Challenging him because he was done. He didn't HBK, want to wrestle he anymore. HBK, right. So every year there's been this program building up to it, and now it's just like, well, CM Punk won the four-way, now we have to find a rivalry. So. Yeah, they're going back to the greatest hits, like I just brought up. Like, they go, oh, we stole the urn, and it's playing the gong, and blah, blah, blah. I think they kind of set up CM Punk to fail, because it's just... 
No one believes he's going to win. I don't know if the match will live up to the last couple Undertaker matches, and if it does, they're going to blame him for it, probably. Right, right. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the people online. Although, now there's these rumors, I don't know if you heard them, no one knows if they're legit or not, that the Taker actually said that he wants to lose this year, that he wants to uh, end it, and that he, the reason that he's doing it is because in previous years, he thought that if he lost to HBK, well, what does that do? He knew HBK was going to retire soon anyway. Yeah. If he lost to Triple H, what does that do? If Triple H isn't even on the active roster. But if he loses to CM Punk, it'll actually give an active wrestler who's actually basically you know, supported the company for the past two years, it'll give him a rub. And he'll so never, he said if he does lose, he, he may want to, to do it. Punk. He may want to do this, but he'll never do it. He'll never allow it. Because what happens when he loses, then when they bring him back next year, well, that'll there's be a it. whole segment, there's a whole pocket of the audience that wants to see Undertaker win. If, if they make him lose, they will not be happy with WWE. Right. They will hate, you know, they will hate it, you know, so uh, it'll, it won't happen. He's going to win. I think he's going to be fast and, and quick. Oh, yeah? A and he's going to be done. Yeah, it's, just, it's over. Now. It's if he wasn't going to lose, then I think the build-up would be better than, than all this, and I think they would have given him more uh, attention. And our team's not going to be there. Like we were talking about before, mm-hmm. there's a schedule floating around out there of like who's going to be on these Raws coming up. I think there's like right. four Raws or something like that. Yeah, I think there's four Undertaker's only going to be at two of them. Rock's only going to be at two of them. And Brock's going to be at two Brock's of them. only going to be at two of them. Yep. And they're only all going to be on the show the last week. <laughs> and these are your top three, four matches. Right, all the main event matches. And you guys are right there. And Rock wasn't there this week. He was in Korea doing something for G.I. Joe. And Cena was actually backstage. They told him not to come out. Because <laughs> they don't want to do this week. They didn't want him to do the same promo where he's going, oh, well, Rock's not here. They don't want the fans to turn on Rock. They want the, the fans to love Rock. So they told him he's not even to come out. Hey, he never came out. That's true. All he night. not even come out. He wasn't on the show. Yeah. So, um, well, it's, part of the, it's part of the poison when you go, oh, we want these guys to pop the ratings, but then they're not really available to you. They're not really right. there. You know? Right, right, right. So... So that's WWE. We didn't talk about SmackDown because it didn't happen yet, uh, but uh, I'm sure there's nothing going to happen on SmackDown anyway. No spoilers. So. Um, Del Rio and so let's talk about TNA because TNA had a big week this week. Okay, so we had just had the lockdown pay per view, mm-hmm. and I didn't see it, but I know what happened in the main event. Obviously, yeah. Um, do you want? Do you, is there anything you want to mention about the pay per view besides? Uh, the well, main event I, well, at least I only saw the women's match. I saw the lockdown match, and then I saw the main event. So, we'll talk about the, the lockdown match. Uh, it was Team TNA versus Team Aces and Eights. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, it wasn't very good. <laughs> I mean, no. the, the problem was, it's like, it was like uh, Aces and Eights had the advantage. Mm-hmm. So, they, one guy comes out every couple minutes. So, they always had an advantage. And all they would do is, like, there'd be two guys in the ring. They would just punch each other and do gra- grapples. Then uh, Aces and Eights would have the advantage, and they would just stomp on the, the other guy. And then the TNA guy come out with two on two, and then they just punch each other, grapple. There was never really anything that made you go, oh, wow, there's huh. no story to it. Huh. It was just like, we have the advantage, we're stopping them, look, we're right, right, them. Right. And then what happens is, uh, usually with these lockdown matches, when everyone's in the ring, when everyone finally comes out, the, the ceiling's supposed to close, and there's, there's whippets hang from the ceiling of the cage. But what happened was they had some kind of malfunction. Oh, shit. And they couldn't get the, the thing down. Huh. So when Sting comes out, he comes out with the weapons. He has all the weapons with him? He has all the weapons with him. I don't know why. And then they're, they're hitting each other with the weapons. They beat down Aces <laughs> and Eights. They, they did a couple of really cool spots once, once everyone was in there. They did the Tower of Doom, ah. which was like maybe like uh, five guys or something. It was like two Aces and Eights guys up. It was like two TNA guys at the top. Uh-huh. No, it was, it was Garrett Bischoff at the top. He was trying to escape. Then it was um, two, two TNA guys underneath <laughs> him, grabbing him. Right. Then there was two Aces and Eights guys under them. And then Samoa Joe came and he just pulled everyone down. <laughs> they all fell from the... It was, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> and Garrett Bischoff went from the top, so a lot of people Damn. gave him props for, uh, for doing that. And then Eric Young jumped off the top of the cage. Wow. And that's how they won. But it doesn't have any kind of future implications. Right, right, right. As you'll find out, because we're about to talk about the main event. And other, than those, other than those couple spots, the match was really, like, not very... Uh, right. You don't, want to see, you don't really care about it. Uh, you don't, it's not needed to see again. So now the main event, and... Uh, Going into it, pretty much everyone thought that Bully's going to turn. We, we literally said this word for word last week. Yeah, and I think that's like, it's the obvious thing, but I think sometimes the obvious thing is the right thing to do. And that's where they got in trouble before, like with Russo. He would, he would oh, the fans expect this. So we have to swerve him. He would do something completely stupid in a swerve, and you'd be like, ah, oh, come on, this yeah, looks like, so unbelievable. Uh, like Bound for Glory a few years ago, it was, what was it, Bobby Roode and uh, an Angle. Everyone thought Roode was going to win, so yep. you have Angle win for no reason, yep. only for him to lose it anyway. Right. 
So sometimes he obviously thinks the right thing to do, and it's okay to do that, though, because that's the best thing they could have done. Mm -hmm. And they did do it, and I like where they got, but the way they, they went about it was like the most uncreative way. <laughs> like early in the match, Jeff Hardy, Bully Ray, Aces and Eights come in the ring. Bully right. Ray fights them and hits, it beats them up. Right. And they run away. Okay, we're going to have a match now. So then it comes out to a point later on, Aces and Eights, they just come out again. That's it, they just come out again. Jeff Hardy turns his back to Bully, and they're both going to fight the Aces and Eights, <laughs> and then Devon throws him a hammer and he hits him in the head. Right. You know, like that's the most obvious way to ever do a turn. He turned, your back, oh, he turned his back on him, now he hits him from behind. And then Bully cut a pretty good promo. Yep. Brooke and, and uh, Hulk were out uh, ringside. Outside of the ring. He was ripping on them, and he cut a great promo. I screwed you. Yeah. I fooled you. Yeah. I used you. <laughs> yeah, that's like pretty much it. Uh, and, and I like where they got, though. It's uh, They had their biggest attendance ever. It was like over 7,000 people in that huh. show. Uh, Impact this week, they were they started their live impacts. They were in Chicago, over 6,000 yeah, people Chicago. there. Yeah, yeah. And they're all paying customers. And that was a good show. Like, the crowd was hot. You know, Chicago was always a hot looks, crowd. Yeah, it was like, filled. The whole arena was filled. It was good. I actually like their setup. I like their, their Titan Shroud type thing. Mm -hmm. The White House, like more, a widescreen bar. Yeah, It yeah. looks more like a wrestling show than WWE. Because WWE is so, so much good production. It's almost too good. And you kind of go, this is like, you know, right, right. Broadway or something. <laughs> you know? It looks more like uh, this is a wrestler. This is fighting, you know. Um, I like where the guy, I like, I like Bully is the, the leader. It's pretty much NWO, though. Like, it's... You could feel it like... It feels exactly like the Invasion, right? The NWO They're invasion. doing something yep. with uh, AJ Styles right now where they don't know like wh where he stands. and um, He's pretty much the Sting character from that era. Right. Where Sting was like this good guy. And they go, oh, he changed. Wh which side is he on? Where's his motives lie? That's what, exactly what AJ Styles is doing. Right. So mm -hmm. I hope that... Uh, I know I'm, Bully's going to be able to carry this because he's that good. Oh, know? yeah. I'm, I mean, they've definitely picked the right guy for the job. He's the, he's so. the, he was the top heel in the company. When they turned him, everyone was kind of like, oh, man, you turned yeah. the top. And now he's back to that position, and he's the champion. He's probably the best heel in, in all of wrestling, I would say. Yeah. Um, my fear, though, is that it's going to be Hogan versus Bully. <laughs> and Hogan's going to win the title. It better not be. Now, if they do that, then it's, we're right back to where we were and, and right. don't watch this anymore. But I hope what they do is AJ Styles is the one, maybe Bound for Glory or something. He's the one that finally can overcome it. and mm -hmm. so. so speaking of Impact, yeah. Aces and Eights, of course, has a massive control over it now. They're interfering in several matches. There's supposed to be there's supposed to be a rematch for the tag team titles. They immediately destroy Hernandez and uh, Chavo. Chavo. So that match is off. Uh, the best match of the night, by far, and one of the best matches I've seen in quite a long time, Sting versus Austin Airy. Yeah, the crowd loved it. This was an awesome match. Well, the two guys, just I don't out. think they've ever wrestled before. And no. so this is their first match ever. The match is amazing. You know, Aries is really showing off. Sting, in his defense, he's an old guy, was doing really well in this he match. He sells. He sells for these other these younger guys, and he, he knows what he's supposed to be doing. Right. Like, he kind of gets it more than anyone else. And he know? kept the t-shirt on, so we were okay with that, too. <laughs> you know, we'd have to see his gut. Uh, so it was a good match, and it you know, went on for a while, too. It was a longer match. Both the guys doing good spots. I liked how uh, Aries made fun of Sting he during the, the match. Death lock. He tried to do his finishers and such. It was pretty good. But, uh, of course, the end of the match, Aces and Eights interferes and basically says, we're now dominating your show, which then prompted the locker room to empty out. And they beat them down. And they Aces beat the Aces shit out of the DNA locker room. They beat the locker room. Down. They beat the shit out of them. Which was what NWO used to do back then, too. Right. But it's all a matter of what they do now. they got to do the right thing. It can't, be Ho it can't be like, oh, no one in TNA can stop him. Only Hogan can do it. He has to step up and fight right. him. Right. It's got to be someone else. Uh, what I would do is I would have Hogan, I would do the match with Hogan, but Hogan loses. Like, he loses badly, bleeds, he loses bad. <laughs> and then someone else, uh, maybe AJ or someone... He, that prompts AJ to step up That person the does it. Right. You go, oh, even Hulk Hogan couldn't have beat him. Who could do it? And right. this guy gets so much more on him. Right, right, right. That's what I would like to see. I'm trying to think if anything else notable happened during the night. I know there was a, a four-way knockouts match. And uh, the return of Mickey James, who hasn't been on TV in a long time. She just comes out in a while. But so. I swear, John, I swear to God, she got a tit job, too. She got another tit job. Because she, she was standing next to... Vanilla, not Vanilla Velvet. Sky. Velvet Sky. I can always say Vanilla Sky. Fuck. And I swear to God, they have the same size tits now. And I'm like, that was not... She never had tits that big. Why, why does all these women wrestlers get boob jobs now? They got Tara Terrell's, the, the ref, is like... All right. And they're all standing there. It's like, what is going on? It's like, what? Jesus Christ, man. But they do a lot more than the, the divas. I think they're, they're better. Well, that's what they're I was going to say. The match was good. It was actually good wrestling. There was, you know, reversals, real moves, real spots, rather than in WWE where it's all shit now. Like I said, I actually look forward to the knockouts. 
Right. And not just the entrances. I like the whole thing. The whole thing. So, uh, it was a t no, it wasn't a four-way. It was a tag match. I take it back. And, uh... Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, um... Velvet Sky went over. Won yeah, Velvet, match. Nikki, and, uh... Right. Against Gail Kim. Gail Kim and, uh... uh fuck. What's her name? Tara. 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 Yeah, yeah. God damn it. I can't yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. calling Victoria. There was a spot where, uh... Where Velvet, like, grabbed, uh... Someone's leg... Because they were going to do a double T move, and she went to the wrong corner. Yeah, she went to the wrong corner. Like, oh shit, and then she turned around. Yeah, she turned around. That was funny. Yeah, I was like, what oh, the man. hell? The announcers, the announcers don't sold it. They were just like, don't say anything. They didn't say nothing, yeah. yeah. And then actually, the double T move was actually pretty good, too. So yeah, 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 it was good. Yeah. The payoff was uh, was worth it. With all the tries, she's not great, but she, she tries. She tries, and you know, that's what I mean. The knockoffs division, it's like actual effort, actual training. I versus, respect that. Versus yeah. Divas is like. It's good for them that they call them divas because if they called them wrestlers, I'd have an issue with it, you know. Yeah. So, I'm trying to. I, I like. I like. I like where they're going right now. Like, I like the live thing. I like. How I do like the live shows. I like absolutely. that they have a real focus. Like, but Bully is the top guy, and people try to knock him down. Right. They have a, it's a, a lot more interesting than have Jeff Hardy as the champion. A believable heel stable. Um. Yeah. Matt, Matt Morgan's actually going to be in a match apparently for the yeah. first time since he, he came back and the didn't crowd do was anything. For him. Yeah, they were. Well, he's going to fight Joseph Park, though. It's not really yeah, it's going to be stupid. But at least he's going to have a match. Yeah. Can you say it's next week? Is it next week? I think so. I don't know. Yeah, I think he said it was going to be the next week's impact. Um, next week is tape, because what they're doing is they're doing... They go to these arenas, they're doing one live, and then you go to tape one. And then it's, so it's, it's live every two weeks. Gotcha. The next one's in Arkansas, the huh. next live show. And I don't know where they're going after that. I hope they come around. Right, right. I don't know. So, TNA, looking strong right now. I'm liking what they're doing with the program. With the it's, a great, it's a great time to jump on. If you, know, if you haven't watched it, it's a, it's a good starting point, I think. Right. So. Finally, finally they've, they've climaxed with the Aces and Eight storyline. Six is good. months of this. Nine months. It was nine months of build-up. When they first came out? Yeah, from, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that's what Bully was saying. Nine months where he turned, you know. I like how it's, th there's no more guys in masks. They all have... They're all revealed now. There's they're all no revealed. One Even though there was person. more, that they're just not there anymore. Right, they're not, yeah, they took them out. Right, yeah. right, right. Okay, so that's it for this week's edition of Smart Guys. Now, next week is a bye week for me. I'm going to be busy, so John's going to be having his uh, pro wrestling smorgasbord show. Yeah, we do a, we do a wrestling show uh, one of the weeks there's no Smart Guys on my channel, John Presents, which I know you know about because this show used to be, was there at one that's time. That's right, obviously. So if you know where it is, then <laughs> we, uh, we do a wrestling show there, right. fill in the, the holes. And, uh, yeah, we, we try to uh, do a good job for you, so come check it out if you'd like to uh, see that. All right, very good. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for tuning in to Smart Guys. I'll, we'll be back in two weeks. That's right. We'll be recapping everything that we missed, obviously. But if you want to check out Pro Wrestling Smorgasbord next week, definitely do so. In fact, I'm telling you to do so, so you better do it. Yeah, it'll be uh, Saturday. All right. So it's the same as uh, Smart Guys. Cool. Yeah. All right, very good. Thanks a lot, everyone. Peace out. See you next, next time. Bye-bye.